Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So this video is all about special multi-stage amplifiers. Before that, we have discussed the multi-stage amplifiers, cascading, loading effect, and effect of cascading on cutoff frequencies, in which we have discussed high cutoff frequency and low cutoff frequency. So in the today's video, I'm going to start with the special multi-stage amplifier in which the first one is Darlington amplifier. So Darlington amplifier is a cascade of two common collector amplifiers. These are some of the characteristics of Darlington amplifier. It is having high input resistance, low output resistance, unity voltage gain and high current gain. Since all these are the characteristics of common collector configuration and Darlington amplifier is also the cascade of two common collector configuration, right? So the Darlington amplifier is used as voltage buffer for impedance matching. Let's do some analysis regarding Darlington amplifier. Here, as you can see, this resistance RE, which is the emitter resistance of Q2 amplifier, and it is a load for Q2 amplifier because in common collector com configuration, we are taking output at emitter terminal, right? This resistance RE2, which is the input resistance for Q2 amplifier, is also the load resistance for Q1 amplifier, right? And as I told you, this is common collector configuration and we take load at emitter terminal. So we can say that this Ri2 is equals to the emitter resistance for Q1 amplifier, right? Now, guys, one more important point is that I'm using direct formulas for common collector configuration AC analysis, right? I have derived those formulas in my previous video. Please check out my video of common collector amplifier AC analysis, right? So here I'm using the direct formulas for input resistance, output re resistance, and all these things. Here I'm using the formula for input resistance, and it is given by input resistance for Q2 transistor, and the formula for input resistance for Q2 transistor is using H parameter model right this is a formula which we have derived earlier please refer to that video since the value of HIE is very small so we can say that RI2 is approximately equals to 1 plus HFE RE right now now the overall input resistance of this Darlington amplifier the overall input resistance is basically the resistance of the first stage of the amplifier which I have already told you in my previous video so here the overall input resistance is the resistance of the input stage of amplifier which is the Q1 amplifier and it is given by again this formula here RE1 is the emitter resistance of Q1 amplifier and this RE1 is also the input resistance for Q2 amplifier as I already told you here, right? So replacing it with this term. Substituting the value of Ri2, we get again approximating the result we get the overall input impedance this HFE if we consider this HFE in pi model then this HFE is nothing but beta of the transistor so we can also write this formula as 
1 plus beta whole square Re. Thus, we can say that the input resistance is very, very large in terms of mega ohms, right? Since this was a Darlington amplifier in which we have not used any type of bias, biasing circuit, right? But if we assume that, let's say, if self bias circuit is used, I hope you remember the self bias configuration. Let me draw for you. Let's say if this configuration, that is self bias configuration is used, then in this configuration, we have to uh, first calculate the RB, which is a base resistance, and it is the parallel combination of this resistance R1 and R2, right? So in that case, we get overall input resistance as Ri parallel to Rb. Now, let's consider one more thing. Here, the Ri is the input resistance of Darlington amplifier, which is this one, where we are not using any type of Bison circuit, right? And it is 1 plus beta square Re, right? And this Rb is basically R1 and R2 are in kilo ohms and this Rb is in hundred tens of kilo ohms approximately and this Ri is in mega ohm, right? So this resistor is in mega ohm and it is in kilo ohm. When the parallel combination of these two uh, resistances are there, then the overall input resistance decreases and it will come out approximately in hundreds of kilo ohm which is not good for Darlington amplifier because it is having high input resistance so in that case we don't use the self bias circuit in Darlington amplifier rather we use the bootstrap biasing circuit in Darlington amplifier so let's understand what is bootstrap biasing circuit so this is a circuit diagram for bootstrap biasing circuit. Here, these are the three resistances which are used followed by a capacitor and here we are having Q2 amplifier, right? So here I am showing only the first part because we are doing only the biasing circuit, not the whole Darlington configuration, right? Now, so what will happen in the DC analysis, the capacitor, you already know that the capacitor is replaced by the open circuit and these R1, R2 and R3 network is replaced by the Thevenin equivalent circuit. So let's do this. So here this VCC is basically a DC battery and this capacitor will become open circuit, right? And here you can see that from VCC we are having R1. So from VCC we are having R1 and then R2 to ground. R2 to ground and here at this point we are having R3 towards the base terminal. So R3 towards the base terminal. So that's how I have redrawn this above circuit. Now let's replace this with Thevenin equivalent circuit. So this is a Thevenin equivalent circuit where the voltage source is in series with the resistor. And this VTH, Thevenin voltage, is given by VCC into R2 upon R1 plus R2, right? And this RTH, which is Thevenin equivalent resistance, is the parallel combination of R1 and R2 plus series combination of R3, right? Here, parallel combination of R1 and R2 and series combination of R3. So that's how we have calculated the Thevenin equivalent circuit. And this is the DC analysis of bootstrap biasing circuit. Right. Now let's do the AC analysis of bootstrap biasing circuit. In the AC analysis, the capacitor, this capacitor is replaced with short circuit. Right. And the VCC node is grounded. Thus, the R1 and R2 appear in parallel between emitter and ground, whereas R3 appears between base and emitter. So, let's draw the circuit. So, this is a circuit. Here you can see that I have grounded the VCC, which is the DC supply. 
and uh, R1 and R2 are in parallel to this emitter resistance and uh, the R3 is in between base and emitter. So that symbol it is. Now you can see that the resistor R3 is in between the input node that is the base terminal and the output node that is the emitter terminal since we are dealing with common collector configuration in which the input terminal is base and output terminal is emitter so this r3 is in between input and output terminal therefore we have to apply the miller's theorem for further analysis right so this r3 can be replaced with the resistance rm and rn by using miller's theorem so that's how the circuit look like rm is at the input node and rn is at the output node right so this rm is given by r3 upon my 1 minus av guys if you don't remember miller's theorem please refer to my previous video i have fully explained the miller's theorem in detail right and this rn is given by R3 upon 1 minus 1 upon AV. Now, the input resistance which I have calculated earlier is taken at that end and the overall input resistance which is RI dash is taken at this end, right? So, now, for common collector amplifier, we already know that the gain is approximately equals to 1 because common collector configuration the gain is 1 the voltage gain is 1 so substituting the voltage gain in these formula we get here the gain is 1 1 minus 1 is 0 and anything upon 0 is infinity in a similar way here the gain is 1 1 minus 1 is 0 and again something upon zero is infinity right so basically these terms rm and rn are infinite thus they are open circuit and can't be included in ac analysis so let's calculate the input impedance which is ri dash which is ri parallel to rm this ri i have previously calculated up to here the circuit is same as previous darlington amplifier Bising circuit takes place the role where we want overall input resistance, right? So this is overall input resistance Ri in parallel to Rm. I have already told you the Ri is approximately equals to 1 plus beta square into Re. So that will be in terms of mega ohms. Now, this is in terms of mega ohms and this is in terms of infinity, right? So our Ri dash is approximately equals to Ri and thus it is in mega ohms. So we can say that by using bootstrap biasing circuit the input resistance will remain high right as compared to that of self bias circuit. So this is the most important point of using the bootstrap biasing circuit. So that's all for this video. Hope you guys are understanding my concepts very well. And for more such videos, please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching.